The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today on this episode. We are continuing with our playthroughs of the prologue from The Circle Undone. This episode, we are taking Jerome Davids through Disappearance at the Twilight Estate. Thanks to uh, everyone for their feedback uh, on the uh, playthrough with uh, Gabriella Mizra. I was uh, hoping to avoid uh, missing any more of those uh, haunted triggers. Unfortunately, I think I did miss one uh, in the game that would have uh, inflicted a horror on me. I think those, uh, those haunted triggers are going to be a thorn in my side throughout the entire, uh, throughout the entire uh, Circle Undone cycle. So hopefully we won't miss any here uh, in this playthrough. We have uh, Jerome Davids. He is the Joseph's secretary. He has two willpower, four intellect, one combat, and three agility. So uh, that uh, four intellect is obviously going to come in very handy as he uh, investigates those locations. Hopefully we will not be triggering too many uh, haunted abilities uh, with a four intellect, but you never know. We uh, we uh, do not do not have a lot of cards to uh, commit to skill tests with these uh, neutral investigators, so we will uh, have to be very cautious uh, with, uh, you know, keeping cards, having enough cards in our hand available to, uh, the, to boost the tests we need. Obviously, he's not a fighter with uh, only one combat, so uh, we are going to have to rely on his uh, evasion of three to try to get away. He is the he does have the assistant trait and the silver twilight trait. He has the response when an investigator at your location draws a treachery from the encounter deck, discard cards from your hand with a total of at least two uh, intellect icons, cancel that card's revelation effect limit once per round, and his elder sign effect is plus one, discover one clue at your location. He has uh, four health and uh, eight sanity, so he is the reverse of uh, Gabriella. So uh, obviously in this uh, scenario, we will be taking more horror than uh, damage, hopefully. He does not start with anything in his starting play area. However, he does start with a, a starting hand of 10 cards, which includes uh, hyper awareness, mind over matter, working a hunch, barricade, deduction, uh, magnifying glass level one, a fingerprint kit, connect the dots, and two copies of Curiosity, the uh, seeker skill that uh, gives you uh, a variable number of, uh, I believe it's willpower and intellect skill icons, depending on the number of cards in your hand. Since Jerome has uh, 10 at the start of the scenario, that will have three, uh, three willpower and three intellect skill icons, so that will be uh, awfully... Uh, important I think starting off we are set up here and ready to go uh, in octagon uh, Jerome here he starts at the office it is a four shroud location with two clues per investigator and it has the haunted ability choose and discard a card from your hand uh, also beginning in play is a copy of Ob Obscuring Fog, which is attached to the location. So it's actually a six shroud location starting off. So if we want these two clues, we are going to have to uh, commit a fair number of cards uh, to it to try to boost up his, uh, his intellect. We also have that copy of Magnifying Glass, which uh, should uh, come in handy here. We also start uh, with the Nether Mist in play. It has three fight, four health, and three evade. Monstro Spectral, its prey is the investigator at the location with the most clues. It is aloof, but it is a hunter, so it will be chasing us throughout this scenario. And the Nether Mist's location gains Haunted. Nether Mist attacks you. It's worth a victory point, but of course victory points uh, don't uh, count for a whole hell of a lot in, uh, in this prologue. And it will hit us for a damage and a horror if it attacks us. So again, even more important that we don't uh, trigger any of those haunted abilities if we can help it. Of course, this is the prologue, so the Spectral Watcher does start in play as well. He has three fight, five health, and three uh, evade. He's an ancient one with the Spectral and Elite traits. He is alert, and he has a hunter, hunter uh, keyword. So obviously, uh, 
if we try to evade him with that alert keyword and we fail, we are going to take a damage and a horror uh, from the Spectral Watcher when he attacks us. And he does have that forced effect. When the Spectral Watcher is defeated, instead of discarding it, heal all damage from it, disengage from all investigators, and exhaust it. It does not ready during the upkeep phase this round. Highly unlikely that we are going to be able to kill the uh, Spectral Watcher in this scenario with a uh, one combat on uh, Jerome, but uh, trying to evade him will be important. He is a three and we are a three, so uh, it's uh, even money. What do we have in our hand? <clears throat> Excuse me, what do we have in our hand uh, for uh, agility icons? Uh, we do have that mind over matter that uh, that could be very important to evade not just the Spectral Watcher, but uh, any other enemies that we encounter in the uh, from the encounter deck. We've already seen in the uh, Gabriella Mizra playthrough, there was that uh, Shadow Hound that appeared, so we will need to uh, get away from him as well. But I think he, if I remember correctly, he only has one agility, so that is uh, not bad. So we may want to save our uh, Mind Over Matter for that. Uh, I think we are almost ready to go. Of course, the Agenda 1A is Judgment uh, 20. And after Doom is placed on any card, each investigator must either take one damage or one horror, two damage or two horror instead if there are if there is five or more Doom in play. So that gets progressively more painful as the scenario continues. And it has the forced effect when this investigator is defeated, we will flip it over. That uh, really only applies if we're playing multiplayer. Uh, Act 1A is the disappearance, and uh, when an investigator is eliminated, we place each of that investigator's clues on this act instead of his or her location. And uh, that is the goal of this scenario, just to find as many clues as we possibly can. We are playing uh, Disappearance at the Twilight Estate on standard difficulty as usual. There is only one token we really have to worry about, and that is the skull. We did see quite a few of those during the uh, Gabriella Misra playthrough. It's a minus three, and uh, if you fail, and this is a, an attack or an evasion attempt, you resolve each haunted ability on your location. All right, I think we're set up and uh, we're ready to go here. Uh, we will give uh, Jerome his three actions. So we want to, the Spectral Watcher, he's coming up here to Victoria Hall, Victorian Halls uh, during the enemy phase this turn. So we will need to get, uh, we will need to get out of this little area. Our best bet, we do have a deduction and we've got the curiosity and the magnifying glass. So we could try to grab these two clues and then move uh, two Victorian halls and then uh, either the master bedroom and the balcony or we can go trophy room, billiard room. Maybe then we can uh, set up a, a barricade, drop a barricade down, uh, lock ourselves in the bedroom or the trophy room while we pick up those clues and then uh, head over to the balcony. And then maybe if we uh, can, if we run into a couple enemies ideally that would be a good time to play mind over matter to drop that boost our agility up uh, to four and then try to evade and maybe clear off a couple more clues uh, oh i'm i assume that jerome is going to do better than uh, gabriella did because she uh, only got the one clue in the game that uh, i posted so we will see if we can't do better here so let's get started. We do have uh, this magnifying glass, which is fast. So we will put that into play right away. So he has a uh, f he has a five intellect while investigating. Uh, we can commit a curiosity to this skill test. Uh, our first action will be to investigate the office. We're going to commit the curiosity and the deduction. We're going to try to grab both clues here uh, right away. Now the question is. Do we, we could hang on to the connect the dots. I believe that works with his, uh, we can use that to cancel a uh, an encounter card. So we may want to hang on to that. I don't know, we're five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. 
nine versus six. That is a three up, which I think is where we want to be. Let's see what the chaos bag has to say about this. Chaos bag gives us an auto fail right off the bat. That is uh, that is tragic. Uh, I just can't. You can't uh, do anything about that. Uh, so we do trigger this uh, haunted ability. That, wow, that is, uh, that's terrible. Okay, so we trigger the haunted ability. We have to choose and discard a card from our hand and the uh, nether mist is going to attack us. So we will take a damage and a horror and we will choose and discard a card. Uh, with three resources, I'm not liking our odds of playing this uh, this fingerprint kit. Uh, so we'll drop that, I think. Wow, that was uh, that was uh, very bad to say the least. I think our option now might be we're still a five versus four. If we can, we could grab a clue with working a hunch because it's fast. And then we could uh, still move to uh, either the trophy room or the master bedroom. And do we have enough for the barricade? We would have enough for the barricade next turn. So let's do that. We do. I'm, what I'm what I'm hoping to do here, I think now is uh, since we didn't get any of the clues at the office, if we grab one with working a hunch, then we can head down to this master bedroom, uh, maybe get to the balcony and then play our connect the dots to grab the clue at the balcony and then grab the clues at master uh, bedroom and the office as well. So let's give that a shot. Uh, we will spend uh, two resources to grab a clue with uh, working a hunch. Our hand is already down to five cards, so this, cura this uh, other copy of Curiosity isn't going to do us a, a whole lot of good right now. Uh, it does have two uh, willpower and two intellect skill icons, though, so that's, that's still pretty good. All right, that was fast, so we're, we're going to move... Uh, to Victorian Halls. Let's bring him to front and we will move to the master bedroom. Uh, we need to flip these over as we go. Victorian Halls of course is a foreshadowed location with zero clues and it has the haunted ability lose one action and we are at the master bedroom which is a three shroud location which has one clue and uh, it has the haunted ability, place one of your clues on master bedroom. Now we do know from the previous playthrough that the balcony is a one shroud location and I think that's where we want to go in order to, uh, to play our connect the dots. We are gonna need to get a couple more resources uh, if we wanna do that though. All right, it is, uh, that is our turn, it is the enemy phase. The uh, spectral watcher is going to hunt and he will move to Victorian Halls, as will the Nether Mist, which has uh, already tagged us once this turn. Give ourselves a little more space to work with here. And that will be it. Uh, we will uh, gain a resource and we will simply uh, add a Doom. Now we have to take a Damage or a Horror. We will take a Horror since that is our, uh, we have more uh, sanity than, uh, than health. And I think we're ready to draw our first encounter card of the game, which is going to be, there is the Shadow Hound. Uh, bad timing there. I was hoping we would uh, be able to get away from this thing without having to, uh, to uh, we, we wouldn't face it this early in the game. Uh, Shadowhound, of course, has uh, two fight, three health, and one evade monster. Spectral trait, its prey is the lowest agility, and it has the hunter and retaliate keywords, and uh, forced after Shadowhound attacks you, resolve each haunted ability on your location. Well, this uh, just got even more exciting. Uh, what we could do, let's get our three actions first of all. 
what can we do here? I still want to do the connect the dots plan, I think. That can clear us three, lo that can get us four clues, which is pretty good, uh, much better than Gabriella's one in the last game, that's for sure. Uh, we could get to the balcony and set up our barricade. And as long as we hang out there, uh, neither of these guys, oh, he is, the Spectral Watcher is elite, so we will have to deal with him, but the Nether Mist is not, uh, and the Shadow Hound is not. But how do we get out of this mess if we, uh, if we lock ourselves in there? I think that's pretty much our only chance, really. Uh, if we lock ourselves in, I don't think we're getting out, but uh, we'll see. First off, we have to evade the uh, the Spectral Hound. He does not have the alert keyword, thankfully, so uh, we do not have to worry about uh, failing this evade check and uh, end up taking another attack from him. So I think our first action will be to uh, we will make an evade. We are three versus one. Uh, that... I think we're going to commit our hyper-awareness to this. I'd like to be three up just in case we draw that uh, that uh, skull token, which is a minus three. And if it is an evade, we have to trigger the uh, haunted abilities, which would be uh, the master bedroom... Uh, we'd have to trigger evasion attempt, haunted ability on each location. So yes, we would be triggering the, uh, we'd, l we'd lose a clue, which would be bad news. And we don't want to do that. So we are going to go four versus one to evade the hound. Chaos bag says minus two. So we are successful. So we do get away from the hound as our first action. Let us move over to the balcony as our second action. Balcony is a uh, one shroud location with one clue and it has the haunted ability for each, uh, each of your cards with health takes one direct damage and uh, that does include our investigator card. It is a card with health so that we'll, we will take a damage there uh, if we trigger that. Uh, we are not quite ready to play our connect the dots, so we will need to uh, we will need to gain a resource, or we can uh, we don't have to worry about the the shadow hound or the spectral watcher or the nether mist this turn. So we can wait. Let's gain a resource now. Uh, so we'll we'll have four resources for next turn, and that will be uh, our turn. During the enemy phase, the Nether Mist and the Spectral Watcher both uh, hunt toward us. I wonder if this is going to be a. Uh, there's a. I mean, we've got uh, three enemies on the table, and all three of them are uh, hunters. I wonder if that's going to be a theme that runs throughout the uh, throughout the Circle Undone cycle. Obviously, these are in the Circle Undone uh, encounter sets, so uh, we're going to have to be dealing with these uh, particular uh, enemies for the entire cycle. So uh, who knows? We may be facing a lot of hunters uh, in the months to come. The uh, Shadowhound will ready during the upkeep phase, and he is hanging out there as well. So... All right. So we've got three enemies bearing down on us. Uh, we do gain a resource, and that will be our turn. So we will uh, add a doom. Two of uh, whatever, we do need to take another horror. So we are at uh, three horror now. We do have the four resources though now, so we can play that connect the dots this turn, if we can clear the balcony, of course. There's uh, after that uh, early auto fail, there's no guarantee that we will uh, in fact do that. So, uh, we need to draw an encounter card, which is going to be another Spectral Hound. Oh, dear. Oh, okay. Well, that is uh, interesting. 
Okay, well, we can still do it. We can still do our plan. Uh, I think Jerome's days uh, are uh, are numbered here with uh, four enemy. Well, four enemies. One is aloof, so we don't have to worry about it. But even with uh, three, excuse me, three enemies to deal with, that's going to be uh, a pretty uh, pretty tough for him. Let's gain our three actions and uh, see what we can do here. Um, I still want to barricade us in. Uh, the Spectral Watcher is going to attack us. Uh, we're going to have to do a lot of trickery here to get through this. Um, so we're going to need to evade. I'm going to save my mind over matter. Uh, I think for this turn, we're a three versus one. Hmm, or do we go four versus one? If we go four versus one this turn, we're very unlikely to get through this mess uh, with the spectral. We're gonna have to evade two enemies, move, we take a damage. Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be the end for Jerome. <laughs> wow, just uh, just too many enemies to deal with for a guy who has no uh, fighting ability whatsoever. Uh, but we do have that connect the dots. So I think... Um, yeah, I guess we'll have to settle for the four clues. I'm going to just commit the uh, the mind over matter to the skill test. So we'll go uh, four versus one. That'll keep the skull uh, off our backs for this skill test. Let's see what the chaos bag has to say, though. Chaos bag gives us a zero, so we do evade the uh, the spectral or the shadow hound. We don't damage him. We evade him. And all right. Well, we can stop the other shadow hound and uh, the uh, the uh, is it the the nether mist from coming after us. So we will spend the we'll drop the barricade, or do we wait? No, no, we're gonna play it now. Because really. We're putting all of our all of our eggs in the uh, in the uh, connect the dots basket at this point in the game, so we do have the barricade there, and uh, so that will stop the other shadow hound and the nether mist from coming in here. But then we will still have the specter and the other uh, shadow hound to deal with. Let's commit our uh, only other uh, our only other card. To this skill test, we are going. Uh, uh, no, we don't have to. Uh, it's yeah, it's only worth. Yeah, that's only worth one. We'll just hang on to it. We can actually maybe bounce. Uh, what does his ability allow us? Discard cards from your hand with a total of at least two icons. So we can actually bounce the. Uh, the magnifying glass back to our hand and maybe cancel an a, fa uh, a treachery card if we have to but i think at this point uh, the writing is on the wall so we'll investigate we are going a uh, five versus one we're four up chaos bag says skull that's a minus three but uh, we do succeed uh fortunately so we will play our connect the dots for the four resources, man, that is a one expensive event. So we discover this clue, and then we discover two uh, discover two clues at your low. Oh shoot! Oh no! Lower. Oh, that's why I hate this card. That is why I hate this card. Fast play. I, two clues with lower printer trout values. Yeah. Okay. So that that hoops us. That's uh, my fault for not reading the card again. I knew there was a reason I disliked this card, and it's that uh, little piece of text that says, discover two clues at locations with lower shroud values than uh, your location. So we get nothing out of that. Um, 
so we won't play it. Unfortunately, that uh, that sucks. Well, that's a, that was a big mistake on my part. Uh, we can cancel a treachery with it. Uh, that's about it. So, yeah, that was our action. That was, uh, would we have been better off going to the billiard room? Let me see here. Yeah, no. Let's, let me see, trophy room, billiard room. Uh, trophy room would have worked. Billiard room would not. Okay, so I don't, does it actually work? I don't think there is a, I'm not seeing a way that I can actually play connect the dots with any sort of success. I'd have to play it at the office or the billiard room, but I could only grab one clue that way. Oh, there you go. Okay, well, we uh, we do get a clue. Unfortunately, that is all we are going to get. Uh, we will, during the mythos, or during the enemy phase, the spectral watcher will uh, come into our space since he is elite and the barricade doesn't, uh, does not stop him. And he will deal us a damage and a horror. Two, uh, f so we've taken four horror and we've got two damage. Uh, then during the uh, upkeep phase, the shadow hound will ready, and that will uh, engage us. We will also gain a resource. So we're at five. Unfortunately, that's not going to do us a whole lot of good. Uh, we will have to evade two enemies and then hopefully and then move and then evade a third. We, uh, I think we're pretty much uh, toast at this point. It was a good plan. Unfortunately, uh, connect the dots doesn't work that way. And so we are, uh, we're stuck in a corner and surrounded by enemies, which is never a good place to be. Uh, let us add a doom. We will take another horror. So we are at five of eight, and we will draw an encounter card, which is Terror in the Night, Spectral Test 4. Uh, willpower, if you fail, put Terror in the Night into play next to the agenda deck. If you fail by three or more, Terror in the Night gains Surge. So what I needed, I think what I needed to do was move to the balcony and then back. No, that doesn't even work, man. Connect the dots must be in this guy's deck just to cancel a card uh, because it's not. Uh... Do I care about uh, Terror in the Night? It's going to be a four, four versus two. And if I fail by three or more, it gains Surge. Yeah, we'll just take it. Chaos Bag gives us a minus three. So it does Surge into a Wraith. It will uh, also be at our location. The uh, Wraith has uh, two fight, two health, and two uh, evade. Monster Geist Spectral Hunter forced when Wraith is defeated by damage, except from a spell or relic. Instead of discarding it, attach it to its location. Attached location gains haunted spawn Wraith at this location. Well, maybe I should have canceled the, uh, the Terror in the Night, uh, but I think we were pretty much dead anyway. Uh, we can evade these enemies, but uh, eventually we are simply going to run out of uh, run out of options. Uh, either the agenda deck is going to kill us, or we're going to miss uh, we'll miss an evade against the spectral watcher, and uh, we will end up dying here. That's all we can do, really. Uh, we cannot move and take three attacks of opportunity. So let's uh, try to evade the Spectral Watcher. We're going three versus three. Chaos Bag gives us a minus one. That is a failure. So he will uh, he will attack us for a damage and a horror. Six, three. Okay, we've only got one life left. Uh, actually, 
yeah, we're dead either way at this point because we will take uh, we will take a damage uh, either from the spectral watcher or the shadow hound, and then we will also uh, take two horror from the wraith, which would be enough to kill us. Also, so let's uh, let's go down to the spectral watcher. We will try to evade him. We get a plus one. Wow, look at that. Okay, well we do uh, we do manage to evade the spectral watcher. So there's a there's a positive in this game of uh, holy negatives. It seems from the from the very first pull from the chaos bag. Uh, we are still dead either way. So who do we want to? Who is the easiest to evade? Uh, I guess we will evade the uh, Shadow Hound. Chaos Bag gives us. Oh no, we're not evading the Shadow Hound. That will be a uh, minus four. So during the enemy phase, we end up taking a damage and two horror, which will be enough to uh, finish us off. Well, that was uh, that was disappointing. I'm uh, I'm a little disappointed in myself for thinking that connect the dots would actually be useful, but uh, it turns out that it is not in this uh, particular deck. It's good for canceling treacheries, but uh, we only saw one. How many treachery did we see? Only one treachery. Yeah, we only saw one treachery all game. Everything else was enemies. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go. So. Uh, we could have used it to cancel something, and uh, in the end, it I don't think it uh, really mattered. We would have survived maybe another turn or so, but uh, I think the writing was on the wall there. So again, yeah, this was uh, this one was negative right from the very get go. We uh, we pulled that. Uh, we had the chance to grab two clues at the office on the first turn. We had we'd committed all the icons. Uh, we were up nine to six, which should be uh, should be good, and we drew the auto fail, which uh, which uh, did us in, unfortunately. So we're going to end up with uh, just one clue, which I'm really disappointed in. Uh, I thought for sure the guy with four intellect would do a lot better than that, but uh, unfortunately, uh, between me reading the cards badly and uh, the auto fail token, he will end up uh, with just one clue. And uh, according to the agenda deck, he will go down to defeat uh, to a monster enemy's attacks. So he is was claimed by the Spectres. Jerome Davids was claimed by the Spectres in this game. So I guess the good thing about the prologue is that it can be awfully short if you're playing in solo. Uh, this was uh, four turns. My previous games... Uh, I had played three in total with Gabriella, and two ended on turn seven, and one ended on turn six. So it's an awfully quick game uh, either way. So uh, who knows? Maybe I will end up playing the prologue uh, quite a bit just to see if I can uh, maybe get to one of those uh, situations where I get more than one clue. That would be awfully nice. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed this playthrough, uh, even though it was uh, very short and uh, very painful uh, from my perspective. And uh, we will, uh, I will be back uh, with uh, a playthrough with uh, Valen, is it Valentino Rivas? He is the rogue neutral investigator and uh, hopefully he will, uh, he will do better for us uh, in that playthrough. He's all about resources, uh, much like Preston Fairmont. So, uh, Hopefully he starts with enough resources that we can uh, use those cards to our advantage and hopefully uh, grab a few more clues this time around. So uh, stay tuned for that. That's going to do it for this uh, playthrough. If you enjoyed uh, this content, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If uh, you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there and happy investigating.